All right, guys, today I'm at my buddy Tom's house, and we want to take a look at the difference between the uh, Mach 1 that's on the left and the Mach 2 that's on the right. And, of course, they are both made by astrophysics. So as you can see, not only some physical differences, but we have some other differences, too, to take a look at. Now the nice thing about the Mach 1 and the Mach 2 is that if you did have a Mach 1, they both take the exact same flat surface adapter, which is the ADATRI. Now the one that I have here, I used to have a Mach 1, and so the one that you're seeing here, uh, they've updated and they have slots in it, where this one doesn't. And here's Tom's, he's got that, and he's got the updated one that you can see the six slots all the way around. Very nice. One thing I want to point out on Tom's Mach 1 is that he did the upgrade kit as I did when I got mine. He had the older version where your azimuth adjuster for aligning to the pole was in front. And it's so much nicer in the back. And so uh, that's what we have here. It is uh, called the Mach 1 GTO Precision Adjust Rotating Base because it rotates uh, high-res azimuth adjuster upgrade kit. It is the M1RAUP. Now another difference with the uh, Mach 1 is the diameter of the shaft, counterweight shaft that comes with it originally. This is 1.125 inches in diameter. This is what comes with it. Then Tom, well, Astrophysics came out with the larger size that would fit the Mach 1 that goes to their 1.875 inch weight sh uh, diameter shaft that would go with the larger weight. So if you had another mount, 1,100, 1,600, you could, uh, instead of having two different size weights, you could... Uh, keep the same diameter, the larger diameter if you wanted, on the Mach 1. And the Mach 2 comes with the 1.875 diameter shaft as standard. Now if we take note of something here, this is what this is the uh, counterweight shaft that came with the Mach 2. And you can see that they have a lead-in They've machined off the threads, and this is the, the one for the Mach 2 that Tom has. And what they did now with the Mach 2, which is really cool, is they put this insert, a stainless steel threaded insert. You can see here where they turn it in, and I'm sure it's probably uh, Loctited in there. Maybe not. And so now... Instead of uh, stainless and aluminum, you've got the stainless and stainless. And I've never had a problem getting them out because they've, for years now, they've been putting this uh, plastic or nylon type washer so that it doesn't stick up here. And then this is what you see uh, on the Mach 1, which all the mounts have my 1600s the same way. But I believe Roland uh, said in one of his, um, on the forum, that they are producing all the new mounts like this with inserts and that they will have available uh, extra counterweight shaft caps that you can retrofit to older units if I recall. And one other thing to point out on the Mach 1 this counterweight cap does unscrew from the Mach 1 but on the Mach 2, I uh, see that, uh, you might not be able to see it here, but it actually is, uh, those holes are filled. You cannot take it apart. 
and I would believe that might be because of the internal cabling and not getting into the that there shouldn't be any need to get into that now another thing the one of the big differences is between the Mach 1 and Mach 2 is the Mach 1 offers internal cabling now Tom uses that I was just never a big fan of it uh, I just never did it but they have they have that and they have a cover that slides down here when you're not using it just loosen these two thumb screws up and it slides down and you can lock it down and cover it whereas now the Mach 2 has dedicated internal cabling so you have no choice and I thought I would I, I took this cap off it does come with a cap so that you can put the pole finder electronic uh, they offer that so if you want to use the pole finder electronic uh, device you can use it here and you see the cabling in here there's one there and there's one here this one looks like it's sheathed in some kind of material and this is just uh, like an insulation material so I thought I would point that out so anybody interested in the Mach 2 it is dedicated through the mount cabling very nice now as one would expect with internal cabling you just can't rotate your deck or RA axis around and around you're gonna break wires so the Mach 2 does have a dedicated stop in it right there I hit the hard stop right there and then we'll rotate it the other direction and there's the other one now the Mach 2 doesn't even though my buddy's got the cabling going through it and I'm not going to rotate it you can rotate this around and around so you just have to remember uh, you know and in most cases it never happens but in this case with the Mach 1 they make damn sure it doesn't happen but um, so uh, since he's got his cabling in here we're not going to do it but this will rotate around and around now with the internal cabling on the Mach 2 this is up at the uh, deck cap we have the USB 3 and a PowerWorks connector that you would connect anything above the saddle from your telescope cameras whatnot we connect here and then they would be fed down here at the bottom where your USB 3 and 12 volt input are and then you also see the RA and deck connector that would go to the CP5 now with the Mach 1 as you saw earlier here's the uh, front part coming through the right ascension axis into the deck axis comes out the front and you can have your internal cab uh, cabling run through here to the motor gearbox and down at the bottom you see how Tom came through the right ascension axis and here you see the cover part way down and everything comes out there now if Tom wanted to and he took the polar scope off everything could run straight down through the right ascension axis another nice thing is astrophysics for a lot of their um, socket head cap screws uh, it takes a 3 16 allen wrench and so also with the Mach 1 to tighten the clutches a 3 16 works same one works for the Mach 2 now here's the bubble level that comes on the Mach 1 it is on the east side of the mount and likewise the Mach 2 has the bubble level also on the east side of the mount all right so we're on the north end the north side of our Mach 1 and this is the uh, nice adjustment knob they give you for your altitude to adjust to the pole to the North Star and you're setting up your mount this is the Mach 2 and now with the Mach 2 
they have this cool little handle that's threaded in comes on and off and there's three positions every 120 degrees they have another threaded hole now we're looking deep into the Mach 1 where your altitude adjustment is so you're on a stainless part so you're not on aluminum so there's no wear point there and the same thing with the Mach 2 now on the Mach 1 you have a locking knob that you can tighten down once you achieve your uh, altitude and there's the scale that's engraved very nice on the Mach 1 and on the Mach 2 it has two knobs two of these like captain wheels on both sides of the mount and it has these graduations on the base all right, next let's take a look at the uh, different way that the polar scope attaches to each mount. Both mounts are using the Astrophysics right angle polar scope. Now with the Mach 1, Tom had to buy an adapter that allowed the polar scope to attach to the bottom end of the right ascension axis. The Mach 2, being the fact that it has dedicated cabling, does not offer that. So Roland had to come up with a different way of doing this very cleverly on the east side of the mount. Loosen up this thumb screw, and this whole thing just pulls out of a dovetail, and it's got a. Uh, this piece is tapered, as is the uh, piece that attaches to the mount. So it's a dovetail, and the base plates are tapered. So when it goes in there, there's no slop. It goes right in, self-aligns, and then you just tighten back up the uh, thumb screw. And here. You see how simple that is to take off. And here's the base plate that remains on the Mach 2. And here you see the tapered, well you've got the dovetail and then you've got that piece that goes into the other that is tapered. So when that goes in it automatically registers itself. Tighten the thumb screw, you're good to go. So next we want to take a look at the power cables and the motor cables and your CPs. Now, Tom has the CP3 with the Mach 1 and when Astrophysics came out with the Mach 2 they have a dedicated uh, CP5 strictly for the Mach 2. Now Tom's using internal cabling and so it uses one connector whether it's internal or not it's using one end connector it has two inputs as you can see here it has your right ascension and deck cable coming off and each one plugs differently into your each motor housing for the right ascension and deck axis then this one connector would plug into the motor connector of the CP3. Your motor cable is indexed and as you see there on the um, CP3 for the Mach 1 there's your index pin and then it just screws right in. Now on the Mach 2 it's done a little differently we have a right ascension and a deck uh, connector on the CP5 and as I showed you earlier on the back end the RA axis 
uh, you have the RA and then the deck input there requiring two cables each one they're the same cable but as long as you plug it into the proper port on the CP5 you'll get the input on the proper axis on the Mach 2 and as to the Mach 2 CP5 this is your motor cable connector and like I said earlier the, the uh, RA and DEC are the same just in different ports so you see the index point there towards the top that would index there towards the bottom of the uh, port and then it would just screw in now your power connector for the Mach 1 on the CP3 is this size right here and that goes right in here just like that now Tom did go to the power works which are very nice so he updated all his stuff all of his power connectors to the power works now here you see the Mach 1 power connector it literally just screws right in here it's got this little like that and it screws in to the CP3 and on the Mach 2 it's got this twist lock now your power connector for the Mach 2 12 volts in is right here and every uh, for quite some time astrophysics has gone to the power works connectors anyways and then that would go on on here just like that all right guys and the beauty of astrophysics equipment as it uh, concerns the uh, connectors on the CPs is everything is different you cannot hook up power or a keypad or your your motor cables they just cannot go into the wrong port unlike some other uh, companies and I won't I won't mention their name but um, with these you rest assured you will not damage anything by putting the power cable in the wrong spot here we have the keypads Tom's keypad is on the left um, this is my keypad which is the newer one that has the recalibrate and enter button over here whereas before they had focus and then they had the RA deck uh, REV 